It's time to get unstuck with the Dream Highway Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Dream Highway Podcast. This is episode 79, believe it or not. I'm your host, Steve Pedersen. Today, oh my gosh, today, the, the podcast you've been waiting for is today. I have a very special guest. Her name is Heather Calloway, founder of Halloway Media Services and host of Practed Goal Talk. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. Heather helps motivated entrepreneurs grow their impact and income using social media marketing. She's a former radio and television commercial producer, and her jam, as she likes to say, is producing high-impact social media content to make your message speak louder than words ever could. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen... Heather Calloway, welcome to the Dream Highway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Well, thank you so much, Steven. I'll tell you what, who wrote that? That sounded nice. <laughs> That's <was> pretty good. <laughs> that must have been somebody in the media field. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Marketing expert must have must have written that bio. Hey, thanks so much for my friend for having me on here. Totally. Man, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Heather and I have been uh, having some conversations and just click in. I am so looking forward to this conversation. Heather, let's start it off with just kind of like a tell us a little bit like maybe some crazy insider knowledge about you. Like what's some things, you know, maybe most people wouldn't know some fun stuff, fun facts, as they say. Yeah, no doubt. Well, the, the first thing that usually trips people up when I when I um, tell them this, and I'm going to say the same thing I say to you to strangers is, can we still be friends? I just need to know that before I tell you this this last this next next thing. Heather, I can't say anything for anybody else, but for me, we are going to be friends. This is a no judgment zone all along the Dream Highway. There are no judgment signs, so uh, give it your best shot. And uh, all right. I love it already. <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't like cheese there. I've said it. I've said it. That's the last thing. I don't like cheese. I'm putting it out there. And I just, I just hope that your listeners haven't dropped off. Yeah. I honestly, Heather, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I need a minute. <laughs> I need a minute here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I like to lead with that. Cause everybody's like, they say what you don't like, yeah. cheese. like everybody else, except for me, I think on the face of this earth doesn't like cheese, but, uh, yeah. So, so I'm a non cheese eater. Uh, I'm a lovable person. Here's a fun fact. I was on yeah. the, the, the Ellen's game of games. Uh, that, that was, was pretty fun. I was on national television. Most people don't Ooh. know that. Now that's the one where you stand on top of tubes. And if you don't last, you fall down the tube. Is that right? Yeah. So that's one part of it. So the, the goal is you play, you play an introduction game to get you to the next part, which yeah. is standing on that high tower. And if you make it off of that high, well, nobody makes it off of the high tower. Everybody drops, but right, if you're the sure, last right, yeah. one to drop, <laughs> yeah. then you get on to, uh, to make the hundred thousand dollars. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a wild and wacky time and I loved it. Oh, uh, that's so what was it about? Like, okay. So most people are not on that show. So what would be yeah. like, what was it about it that you love? That was such a unique experience. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, just having fun, man. I, I think, I think I was put on this earth to first have fun. I think that's the first rule, you know, party, mm, yeah. have yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take yourself so seriously. And, yeah. um, and I was Great challenged. Advice. Yeah. And I was challenged to do it. So I think for me, the overall experience of being in local television and seeing how the big girls do it out there, mm, um, mm. seeing how national network television is ran and, mm. and, and what that beast was to me, that was the most interesting part. Mm. Uh, but you know, just getting in front of Ellen was very interesting as well. I mean, that, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. What, I mean, yeah. What kind of, what kind of energy does she give off in person? Yeah. You know, the same energy that you see on television is what you're, what you can expect you know, in person, yeah. um, it's just a little bit different if you're standing there in front of her having to sure. answer questions on the fly with lights in your face. If you've never been on a television <laughs> set or a national standing, television right, set, standing suspended above a shoot that you might uh, fall yeah. and you eventually will fall down. Yes. Or in my case, being strapped to something and, and, and pulled through a wall. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> Yeah, it was a, it was a, I'm going to call this a horizontal uh, bungee jump is what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and like it. I love it. Yeah. Horizontal yep. bungee jump. Okay. All right. Yep. Well, that's fantastic. That is, um, that's a very unique experience. And yeah, I can imagine, especially, you know, be, having done the work that you've done to see, you know, the big boys or the big girls or whatever play that game. And uh, did you learn and did you come away from it? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you came away from it awe inspired, but did you, yeah. was it like a master class for you that you came away and were like, oh, I could put this into practice? And if so, what was that? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So I, uh, so the game that I played was called Taj Mahal. And what you had to do now, listen, in my, in my, yeah, I know with, with, with the whole thing, with the audition process, with everything, you know, I told them I'm a former athlete. I played softball, but then I told them that I was a, a trivia host at one point. And so they, I think they clung on to that, that I was a trivia host. And so maybe a mental mm. game, you know, they put me in this mental game and I was like, man, I wish you would have put me in something athletic. Like, let me, let me put a hole in a, bu or I mean a ball in a bucket or, or, you know, like grab a, grab an apple with my mouth and have to pull on somebody else. But no, they gave me a mental game, but I digress. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, so what I learned from that was, you know, looking, being in the spotlight and literally having about five seconds to make a knee jerk reaction, um, there's still time in that five seconds to take a breather, collect mm. yourself, and then respond. Um, what I did when I was on the show is I reacted because I was nervous. Mm. Naturally, you're in front of Ellen DeGeneres. Mm -hmm. You know that your show is going to be on national television. You know you need to keep it a se secret uh, for, for, a, for a couple months until your episode airs. So there was a lot of pressure going into it, even though you were there to have fun. So yeah. I think the main point that I'm bringing uh, that I learned by being on national television and being in a game show that requires five seconds for you to make zero dollars or a hundred thousand dollars is that breather, that moment you take in between mm. uh, where you could respond or react. Mm. Fortunately, mm -hmm. I reacted and looking back on it, I wish I could have done more breathing exercises and responded. <laughs> sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Um, man, I, so I, I don't think I ever saw this conversation coming. This, this is fantastic. And you know, what's interesting uh, as you're saying this, it just, I, I, you know, I have come from a background where I have a lot of exposure to the, the Bible and uh, what it reminds me of is a story where there was this guy who was taken captive in this foreign land and he found some out some news about his homeland. And so he was downcast and you can't come in front of the King with a sad face. Otherwise you might, you know, lose your life. And the king was like, you know, hey, what's going on? What's wrong with you? What's the problem? And uh, he tells him the problem. And he's and the king was like, well, is there anything I can do? And then what it, the story says is that he took a few moments and he said a prayer, just a, you know, just a brief little prayer, you know, mm. but he took that time. He took that moment to reflect, to take a deep breath instead of just, you know, spouting off whatever. Uh, but he took that time and put his request before the king. So it's interesting, just that whole concept of, you know, what do you come away with? You were standing in front of Ellen DeGeneres, who was very intimidating. This guy was standing in front of a king. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure um, that you probably signed a waiver before doing oh. this show. <laughs> Oh, many. I don't even know what it, I, I think I signed away my third born. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you sign it or you don't play. Please continue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. And so that was, I mean, this guy had no waiver to sign. He was dealing with his life mm -hmm. and uh, man, how many things in our lives do we face that are so intimidating to us? And we just, we react out of fear as opposed to, yeah. Hey, I, I got this. Let me take a few minutes to reflect um, beautiful. Love it. Wow. I didn't know. See, look at that. Yeah. You, this yeah. Incredible we story. <laughs> and we're already <laughs> dropping the mic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Like, you know, as a, as a business owner and an entrepreneur, my, my lifestyle, my life, uh, you know, depends on the ability to sell. And I was just telling you before, you know, before we got on this call is like these sales calls, man, I tend to react and I want to be in mm. a place of response because mm. From there, you know, you're able to, to, to position yourself as the authority because you're calm, cool, and collected. Mm. But, but because of um, my, you know, 
all of the sales experience and the selling up to this point has been very reactive. I reacted the same way. Mm. How do we break free from that, brother? How do we do that? Well, right. And the first, I guess the first thing I can think of is to not judge ourselves, right? We've talked mm. about, you know, they're not being a, a no judge or they're, it's not a judgment zone, whatever, no judgment. Yeah. Um, yep. To give ourselves the freedom to make mistakes and, um, and, and to hopefully learn from them. Um, but I, you know, it's interesting that you're mentioning this and this is all, man, this is all good stuff, very practical stuff. And that is um, just the other day, I was talking to my wife about a situation that had come up and somebody had mentioned something to me and I didn't respond. Um, I didn't actually say anything because what they said to me was like, so like, my jaw was on the floor kind of a thing that I was like, I don't want to say anything stupid here. Um, so I didn't say anything, but I was talking to my wife about it later. And like, man, I, I'm like, I'm a life coach, you know, <laughs> saying like, I'm, I'm, that's my responsibility, role, job, or whatever you want to call it to be able to deal with those things in the moment. And her response was, well, how you get better at that is that, you know, maybe uh, it happens and you never realize it. Okay. So that's, that's one, that's one place you could be. And then the next thing is, well, it happens and you realize it. And maybe a week later you go back to that person and you address it. And then maybe the next time it's, it happens and you realize it, you don't say anything, but then three days later, you know, you go back and you talk to that person and you're constantly moving mm. the needle closer until you get to that point where it's like they said something and I responded immediately. I took yeah. a, I took a deep breath and I responded immediately uh, from a place of wisdom, you know, yeah, and a place of fearlessness, you know, I might say the wrong thing, but I've got to say something. And um, yeah. yeah, so um, man, I love yeah, deep breath. <laughs> yeah, I love that, though. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, um, as I, you know, as I do these sales calls so that I could, I can respond better. I record them. I record mm. them. So, because, you know, in the marketing world, you can't optimize what you don't document mm. and you could take that for life. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I've optimized my weight because I've documented it. Yeah. I'm optimizing my finances because I'm documenting them. Well, now I need to optimize the sales process. And I've, and I'm documenting it. Then I need to get over the fear of watching my calls. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know, and coming you'd at it from watch my... the, you'd rather watch the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh yeah, totally. Game, right? game yeah, absolutely. I would watch me getting sucked <laughs> through that wall and repeat any day versus having to watch my sales calls. But having watched mm. me, you know, getting sucked through a wall, isn't going to get me closer to that hundred thousand dollars, but right. I can get there. Yeah. There you go. And it's not going to happen every time you watch it. It's not going to happen differently. <laughs> it's gonna, right. You know, my kids are always like, oh, we watched the movie, you know, whatever movie again. I'm like, did it turn out differently this time? <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Only you can do that in your life story, right? Only you yes. can rewatch an episode, if you will, a yeah. sales call episode, and then have your future turn out differently. Oh, dude, yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. That's, that's totally. Ooh, like that. And even the process of that is like, okay, because it's all, it sort of happens in the mind first. Right. And if you can imagine, like I could go back to this conversation and I can imagine, okay, how did that play out? How would I have liked to see that play out? What are the, the various, it's almost like a game, you know, like the, yeah. or, um, you know, I'm, I, not sure if you're familiar with the, some of these ideas about, you know, parallel universes, you know, oh, yeah. stuff like that, where it's like yeah. the upside uh, down. <laughs> yeah. Every, anything, there's multiple different possibilities of what could happen, you know, mm -hmm. and the thing that we observe is the thing that does happen. So maybe we can sort of project into the future and sort of play out these scenes. So in your case, it could be a sales call. How do you want the sales call to go? Um, mm -hmm. In my case, a conversation. How do I, how how can I see these conversations going? Um, yeah, man, this is great. And and we're just getting started with this uh, podcast, by the way. I mean, well, this is the intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang! We didn't even, we didn't even the, get any questions. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even asked the first question yet. <laughs> That's when you know the movie's really good 
when you're yeah. sucked into the movie and all of a sudden they hit you with the they hit you with the movie title and then you're right. like wait that was the <laughs> that was just the opening like put your seatbelts on kids yeah right right exactly so let's do that let's dive into some stuff so uh we we know we've kind of we know this we know this is going to be a great conversation so let's talk a little bit about you know what specifically it is you know, your dream, your dream highway, what it is that you're going after, uh, what you're pursuing, what does that look, what, what's lighting you up right now? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, great question. And, uh, this is scary. This is scary to come out, if you will. Now I'm a gay woman. I've come out already, but I'm gonna come out for the second time in my life (laughs) and tell the world, I want to be the greatest host of all time. That's it. I said it. I put it, it in is. my notes the other day on my phone. And my gosh, I'm sorry, Megan. I didn't even tell you this, but I told Steven first. <laughs> I want to be the greatest host of all time, my friend. I love okay. it. So oh, let's, I love let's, it. Let's, yeah, let's do this. So host of what? Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm all about fun. So that might, so I'm thinking it's either a game show. Okay. It's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a game show. Or it's a cooking show. I'm a big fan of holiday okay. bake-offs on the Food Network. <laughs> okay. So, you know, Jesse Palmer, I'm coming for you. <laughs> there you go. Like, there you go. Uh, it's just, it's just, that's my, that's my cup of tea. It's very light. Sure. It's very fun. It's very airy. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's seeing people get creative and just pouring their passion into a batter and then creating something out of that. I really dig that. Or yeah. Tyler Florence, I'm coming for your job, man, with the, with the great food <laughs> truck race. You know, you these are the things that I consume and I, yeah. and I, and I, I have the style and I have the flair for it. And, um, and so now I need to figure out how to get to it. Okay. And so these would be, you're envisioning a television show, correct? Doesn't or- necessarily need to be a television show because here's the thing, you know, okay. television may or may not be a dying breed. I haven't done enough research mm, to come out and give a solid opinion on that because people are still, wa- you know, Netflix, Disney, Hulu. Yeah. That's not television though. That's streaming mm. services that you yeah, happen yeah. to watch on a device. That device could be your television, could be your phone, your iPad, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, most often at our house, it is on our television. I'm not watching, I'm not streaming on my phone or my iPad. So it could be an online show. It could be straight yeah. to a streaming service show. It doesn't have to necessarily be, um, cable. Okay. So you want to be, uh, a, a host. Mm-hmm. Is it, a, but we're not sure if it's a game show, which is fine. Uh, yep. but we know that you want to be a host the, and the greatest host. Is that, is that how you would phrase yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So here's your affirmation. I am the greatest host. <sighs> Give it a shot. Try it that? on. We're, 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 it's like we're in a. It's like we've gone into a, a really nice car showroom. Yeah. And you're like, that's my car, and you're gonna get into that car, and you're gonna try it on and see how it feels to step into that car. All right, give it a shot. I am the greatest host. Yeah, I mean, you got. I'm convinced. <laughs> okay, hire me. No. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, awesome. I'm yeah. Stepping into it. I'm stepping into it. And here's, here's why I say I'm stepping into it. Number one, you're the, the, the beyond my notes on my iPhone, you're the second thing that I've told <laughs> okay. beyond your, beyond your audience that's listening to this yeah, <laughs> okay, You're this yeah. thing that I've, that I've, and I've, you know, affirmed this too. Um, now it's getting clear on you asked me, right. Okay. Well, what, what show is it? So that's what I'm saying. I'm leaning into this, this is my first uh, this is my first step into this, this identity. Yeah. I love it. And as you know, all of us, as you, as we all, you know, because, you know, we're, we're asking some questions about getting specific. We're not totally there yet that we haven't totally focused the camera yet, but yeah. at least we've got the camera pointed at what we want to focus on. Right. Yep. And yep. so what is it about that, that lights you up? about hosting. Yeah. Or yeah, about even I, about your vision, about what, you know, what you see as your vision. What is it about that that lights you up? Yeah, a couple things. One being, you know, I really do love the play. I love the play of it all. So interacting yeah. with 
you or a contestant or the audience or, you know, I was in a, in a former life when I was an employee before being an entrepreneur, um, I was a public speaker. I was a college recruiter. And so mm. I, I've, I've been in front of thousands of high schoolers. And if I can get them motivated, excited, happy and laughing and have them take an action, brother, there ain't no, there's no reason why I can't be a host. There's no reason. Yeah. Like adults yeah. are a little bit easier to, <laughs> to, 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 to entertain. Anyway, yeah. so I do love the back and forth, but the back and forth of, of, of interacting with say a contestant or somebody. Um, and one of my superpowers is, is a quick wit. And having that, mm. that, you know, that, that pew, pew, as we're going back and forth yeah. Yeah, in a yeah. conversation. And then the second thing, man, I got to tell you my ego as a Sagittarius, yo, we love the spotlight. So <laughs> I'm just going to come out with it again. Here's another thing I'm going to come out with is I love attention. Mm. And so the more I get, yeah. the more I can give, mm. you know, the more I can make, the more I get, the more I can make people feel good about themselves. And that's yeah. the other thing too, is I really like to make people feel good about themselves. Mm, I love that. And I, I, I really appreciate just your honesty in that I love the attention because it's it's so funny. That's that's something that I've been thinking about myself lately. Like, yeah, I did, but I always seem to say it in a kind of sheepish way or it's not. I wouldn't broadcast it on a podcast. <laughs> you know yeah. like, so I, I applaud your courage to, to do that and, and just your honesty, because I think a lot of us, that's what uh, that's what we want. We want attention. And of course, we could dive into, yep. you know, why is that? I'm sure there's multiple reasons. Um, but what's interesting is that what we were talking about earlier, as far as, um, you know, like what you focus on or what you give attention to is what shows up. Yeah. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons why we like attention is because we want to make sure we don't disappear. <laughs> you know, we want to make <laughs> right. sure that we are, we stay one of the probabilities, you know, that we, yeah um, yeah, are, are present for people. So, okay. So let's talk about, uh, yeah, maybe let's go a little bit deeper with this. Why is that something that's important to you? You did mention, um, that you like people feeling, was it feeling good about themselves? Is that oh, what yeah. it was? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm here to spread some joy. Um, mm. and, and I'm not afraid to be the one with the microphone. So if that's, if that's my role on this earth, brother, I'm, mm. I'm ready to step into it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm there. So, so, you know, I think what it comes from is, you know, I'm an only child, uh, from, mm. from parents that divorced at a very young age. So I think okay. for me, getting attention was very important and, yeah. and, and having that, um, uh, that feedback was important to me. You know, yeah. I played softball. I wanted to be the one that hit the game winning home run, sure. wanted to be the hero. It's, you know, I grew up with my mom, uh, and you know, hung out with my dad, but I, but I grew up with my mom. And so mm -hmm. making her smile, making her, uh, happy, you know, yeah. um, and, 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 and bringing that in, forth into a career mm. and doing a lot of mindset around that, not understanding, you know, how I grew up affects me as an adult. But mm. I think that's the driving factor is, you know, when I was a kid, it was my mom and I. And so I was, I wanted to make her happy because I saw her sad. Mm, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's interesting as, as you're talking about this, I'm just, uh, the podcast that I just uh, recorded previous to this, we were kind of discussing the same thing about how you're, uh, you, um, at you come into the world at, at what this guest called a unity consciousness, and then you start learning, you know, and mm. adapting because of the environment around you, your parents, you start learning these things, and then you carry that obviously uh, into life. So this is something very significant that happened to you. How old were you when your parents got divorced? I think it was four or five. Super. Okay. Young. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm assuming you probably don't even remember anything no. about that, right? You just, no. when you started becoming conscious and aware, it was like, Hey, I have a mom, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that I, I could see how that hugely, you know, affected why, you know, this is, this is important to you. Um, man. So what, um, how does that sort of play into what you're doing now? You, so in the introduction, we talked about, uh, you know, you've done the media services thing. 
So you did mention earlier that you had sort of a day job kind of a thing, mm -hmm. and then you went, I'm assuming the media services was an entrepreneurial endeavor. Um, yep. And the practice, if you want to explain a little bit about what the practice goal talk, what that's all about, and how is all of that kind of a part of the journey uh, it, to becoming, uh, to actualizing this truth that you are the greatest host? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So um, the, the, the Holloway Media Services came out of happenstance and survival. <laughs> so the mm. company I was working for as a college recruiter, um, God bless them, but they didn't know how to do business. And so mm. they, they were, they weren't treating us fairly. Uh, mm. and so we had to go and, and I had to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, it was so bad. It affected my mental health for the first time mm. in my life. I was put on antidepressants. Mm. Um, I was just crying every single day. I didn't know what was happening. I had no idea. Sure. Yeah. So, so out of that, I was like, there has to be something better. And finding a job usually takes a lot of, it could take a lot of time. It may not take mm. a lot of time now, but back in 2017, it did. And sure. so I was like, nah, there's gotta be a better, quicker way. And, and I was at a, uh, a, a, a local chamber event and, um, was offered an opportunity to start doing social media marketing for a company. And I was like, not having done social media marketing, I was like, <laughs> I can do it. Oh my yeah. what it was just a bunch of pictures and video. I was How in radio and television. Be? How hard can it be? I was in radio and television. I've produced commercials. I've done it for the last, you know, 20 years. Like pff, walk in the park. Four and a half years later, now I know what social media marketing is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's a whole lot more than just taking a selfie and putting it up there. Um, so so anyway, so so you know. Out of out of uh, uh, working as a college recruiter, Holloway Media Services started, and over the four years, we've now adapted and and created our own content marketing system. Um, and so, I'm trying to get this message out into the world. And I thought, no better way but a podcast. And hey, if I want to mm -hmm. host, go host, go host something, create something of your own. Yeah. And so, Practical Talk came about. And the reason why Practical Talk came about is because I'm a first generation entrepreneur. And if your listeners haven't heard that term before, that means there ain't nobody that came before me in my family to teach right. me what business is. Now I went right. to college and I have an entertainment business degree, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference between <laughs> a paper degree that you get from an institution yep. and the certification that you get from life. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I have sure. learned more, right? I have learned more from being a business owner than I ever did in mm. school. School was great, laid the foundation, gave me some concepts and some keywords and some buzz terms. And we created some, some cool, you know, uh, um, 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 projects out of that. But, but there's no, there's, there's, there's no uh, replacing the real deal. Yeah. So let me, the question that's coming to my mind is, did you come out of college confident that you could do what you went to college for? And because I'm because I'm, you mentioned the word, I think you mentioned the word validation. Um, what was that like? Like, did you did you come out of that saying, oh, I got this? And then maybe it kind of went to like you get into the real world and like, oh, do I do I really got this? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I came out confident as if I was going to be a million dollar baller. <laughs> and in fact, uh, my friend uh, and I started a business while in college and we launched and, um, fun fact, you know, fast forward to, you know, not even a year in business, we shut down. And I think a year after that I was in bankruptcy. So, mm. you know, thought I knew what I was doing. Turns yeah. out, should have done a little more studying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little less partying a little more, at college. Actually, that's right. It's a, it's a little more, it's a little more action, and and the learning does not stop. It mm. doesn't stop. Oh, it doesn't stop. But I did stop, and because of that, so mm -hmm. so did the income. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then, so it was kind of like you came out of college with the confidence went into reality and like, whoa. Yeah. But then I'm assuming the confidence started coming back 
and what was was it just getting some reps as they say yeah. uh, w- w- was that what kind of led yeah, to the me, confidence coming back let or? me let me break the confidence break let me let me break the confidence timeline down for you and your listeners you ready you sitting down here we go confidence <laughs> timeline graduated <laughs> in 2006 with a bachelor's with, uh, of entertainment business from Full Sail University. Shout out to my alma mater. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I've I've seen a lot of ads for Full Sail yeah. University. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot of ads, a lot of debt. There you go. All right. So Full Sail University is getting real. I love you, Full Sail. I love you. Um, you got to get me on that. Uh, they do a um a red carpet walk. So y'all better invite me someday. Okay. So here we go. Uh, 2006 came out, came out of the womb, if you will, already and fired up. We started a business, um, 2009, uh, bankruptcy. And then from 2009 until 2018, uh, I started from the bottom and now I'm here. Okay. Hmm. So, so, you know, I went from, you know, job to job, to job, to job, to job in 2017, finally landing on Holloway media services. I should say finally landing on myself. I've had, mm, yeah. I've done had enough, my friend. I mm. have had enough at that point. So 2017 happened, 2018. Now this is when I'm living in North Florida. A year later, after I started my agency that popped off, by the way, it popped off. I started making more money than I had ever before. And I thought that was the second time I, I thought I made it. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. All right. Uh, fast forward to uh, uh, Q4 of 2018, where I separated from my partner uh, of 10 years and I enter mm. into a divorce mm. and I didn't basically didn't have two, two nickels to rub together to feed my dogs. And that was my priority. Mm. So I, so I leave from the, this is all getting to my confidence, by the way, I haven't lost my mm-hmm. point from 2018 at the end of 2018. Um, driving home with my dogs and my cat in the back of the car, choosing myself, crying the whole way. um, That is when my confidence was beginning to to rebuild. Mm. So from 2018 to today, I've read, I've gotten coached. I've been in masterminds. I exercise. I eat better. I'm still eating French fries. I eat Mm. better. But not with cheese. (laughs) I drink more water, <laughs> not with cheese ever. Don't you dare. I'll slap it out of your hands. No, I won't. No I'm a lover, not a, <laughs> yeah. You can have all my cheese here real quick on an aside. Love it. We become instant best friends because if we go for pizza, yeah, I take yeah, yeah. the cheese off the pizza and you can have it. <laughs> I you have can, extra cheese. I know, yeah. You have extra cheese. You take it off first. You know what I mean? Cause I know we're living in a pandemic. You take it off first. I won't ever touch it. Then you give me the dough with the sauce on. That's all I want. Keep me happy that way. Okay. Love it. Back to the confidence. Uh, So here we are in 2022. I have a beautiful internally and externally fiance who Mm. adores me and I adore her. Mm. I am thriving. I am thriving. Mm. And I nearly feel complete. And that's what I'm searching for. Complete wholeness. Yeah. And I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And I say I'm almost there because I just need my bank account to get caught up with (laughs) with, with how I feel. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow. What a man, this is an, this is an incredible journey that you're on. And so what of all of these things, what would you say? All right, let's, let's give the, everybody like the, the keys to the golden Cadillac of the universe. What is the key to confidence? Would you say? Know thyself. Okay. All right. Know thyself, know what you, you do and do not stand for what you're willing mm-hmm. to put up with and what you're not. Okay. What's a, and what's a specific example of where you've made a, a decision that was very validating for yourself, like where you could say, I never would have done this, but because I've established this criteria of confidence. I made this decision and here's how it turned out. Can you think of a specific? Yeah, I could. Uh, October 13th, 2018, when I decided to leave my my 10 year relationship, pack up all of my personal belongings, well, nearly all of my personal belongings and choose myself. Mm. Um, God bless to my former partner. Um, I, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And I, and I don't think she's aware of how, how much um, effect she has on another person. Mm. And so, um, 
And so that was, that was the moment of confidence. I mean, I had mm. to be very secure in myself that I was able to pick up and say, I can do this on my own. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'll say, and I'll give you a, I'll fast forward four years and come to, to yesterday. Now, I don't know when this is going to air, but you know, as of late February, I was offered an opportunity to make a lot of money, a lot of money. I don't even need to, I don't even need to do that dang old sales call that I hate. Mm. The, 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 the money was pushed towards me and mm. I have since deflected it because of my values mm. and I'm not willing to work for a company that takes, that's going to be a bully. Yeah. I'm just not doing it. And so I said no, and I rejected it. Mm. Wow. Now, mm. if that was Heather Holloway of 2018, I'd be like, give me the money and I'll deal with yeah. all the other mental abuse later. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, you know, that's a, that's really a great point. I don't know if I've even ever considered this, the, the, because what you're talking about are boundaries here. And we're talking, and you're talking about just being yourself and being true to yourself. Um, and everything is about relationships, whether it's a significant other or a job or a client, this kind of a thing. Um, and we take the jobs, we take the relationships, we take the clients thinking, this is what I need right now, not thinking of the long-term damage. Yeah that you're going to have to work through, uh, in, in the coming years, maybe even like how, how might that set back? How might this client that I'm taking on that I will work with for the next month, three months, six months or whatever, just cause I need the money, man, Yep. you know, to, but just think of what that's going to set back. If I, if I take this, yep. Well, And two, I'm, I'm, I'm both training myself and my spirit guides. If you believe in, in such things, I do what I want and what I don't want. And remember Mm -hmm. confidence for me, the key is know thyself. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm asking and I'm trying to attract those that I want to work with, and I'm trying to attract wealth, well, I can't take somebody that's going to abuse me. Mm. And, you know, cause then the universe will be like, well, sister, you're giving me mixed signals here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, I did not, uh, <laughs> I had no idea where this conversation was going to go and I'm, I'm loving it. Um, yeah, All because I don't just... like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> now. Oh, what if somebody says say cheese, you know, when totally okay admit... with that. Totally okay. okay with that. All right. Cause yeah, I, you know, yeah. that happens when people take pictures and they say it cause they want you to smile. And I can just imagine yeah. say cheese and you're like, cheese. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> you're going to get a total smile from me. Absolutely. Cause, I cause you're in cheesy. on the, yeah. Cause but you're I, in you know, on the secret. Yeah. Yeah. The fun, yeah. The fun part is I like to cheese it up, but yeah. I don't want to eat the cheese. <laughs> Got, it. Eat the cheese. Got it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can see it now. The, the <laughs> title of this podcast episode is eating the cheese with Heather. <laughs> or not. <laughs> right. Um, so, all right. So you are on your dream highway. You are, you're going after your dreams We're we've already talked about several of the obstacles. And I think you've mentioned one already, you know, with this whole sales call yeah. kind of thing. Um, let's just kind of explore that a little bit more. It doesn't have to be necessarily the sales call, but what, um, you've overcome several obstacles to get to this point. What might be, if there are any obstacles in the past that you feel like are significant, you want to talk about great, but any, you know, continual obstacles that maybe you face, or maybe even a a big one that you're facing right now, what, what kind of obstacles or some people call them Goliaths or whatever that sort of get in your way and intimidate you, taunt you maybe uh, on your dream highway. Um, yeah. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's self-worth. I'm still working on self-worth. We, Mm. you know, from an agency perspective, we do incredible and phenomenal things yet for some reason, the word validation, right? I need validated Mm. I need mm. to know that what we are providing is in fact what I just said it is. Cause I, I mean, like I say it, 
Mm. I say it and I know it. And my team's like, we do great things. And the, my, our clients, which is the, the, the most important part are like, holy smokes, this is, I, I had no idea. I, I didn't yeah. know business could be like this. I didn't know I could look this way. I didn't know my brand could show up like this. What more do I need? That is the Goliath that I need mm. to um, respectfully say, no, thanks. Mm. You know, I'm not a killer, so I'm not going to shoot a pebble and, you know, so sure. I'm going to ask him to go kindly go away, <laughs> go bother right, somebody yeah. else, go to somebody else's village. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. That's probably one of my major, what more validation, Heather, do you need? You know, you, you touched on something there that I think is incredibly significant and it is how we deal with our obstacles and do we deal with them? Because I mean, a lot of times, man, it is so very ingrained, innate within us to deal with them violently. Like we mm. think violence is, is the solution, you know? And I mean, case in point, like right now, at the time of this recording, Ukraine is being invaded by Russia, right? And what, as an American, what do you know? What do we usually think the the response is? Well, just we have enough missiles for crying out loud. Let's just go bomb the heck out of those guys and put them in their place and tell them, you know. <laughs> but really, wow, that's pretty violent. Um, what? Yeah. So, what are some? Maybe the question is in general. What are some nonviolent ways to deal with our obstacles? Um, so let's, yeah. I mean, let's take, let's take this one uh, specifically as, as an example. So the obstacle is uh, needing that, that validation. Um, what would be a, what would be a violent way of what, what would be the tendency? Like, uh, yeah. Okay. So we're not dealing with, you know, fortunately you and I, we don't have to deal with the whole rush. You know, there's other people that are much better equipped to take care of that how white, how white, how might we be sort of given the opportunity to deal with obstacles in a violent way? Can, I'm just I, gonna, I can tell you, I can tell yeah. you, uh, I think the words that we use in our mm. head is mm. violent. I think there's mm. violence happening in our heads, that little ticker mm. tape of, uh, here, here's another one, Heather, you, you messed that one up, you know, mm. way to go, way to go. You know, the judgments that those are all, if you, if you want to, if you, all of those thoughts, if you want to put them metaphorically are bullets, you yeah. know, and if you don't have that bulletproof vest on, man, you're just shooting yourself in the foot and yeah. the leg and the whatever. Yeah. So, so, you know, so, so to combat that I try to breathe and I do my mm -hmm. breathing exercises mm -hmm. and I meditate mm -hmm. and I ask spirit for help guide me. I ask how, how questions, how can I, how can I give me a signy sign? so that I can see <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I, uh, that's a great metaphor. Cause as you're, you're talking about, I'm, I'm thinking about like, you know, in the old, old, old days where they're like lobbing uh, balls of tar that are on fire, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> or arrows or whatever, just kind of yeah. flying at yeah. you. And yeah. We do that with our, with our words, like, Hey, let's fling some, some words yeah, like you said, internally at ourselves to, you know, of course, I'm sure we've all heard that saying, like, would you talk to your friend the way you talk to yourself? Yeah, yeah, you I know. try to I try to adhere to that as well, because I tell my best friends that when they're down on themselves, I'm like, Shh, no, no yeah. way. I'd, I'd, I'm not I'm a lover, not a fighter. So I physically wouldn't beat somebody up. But boy, what I want to if somebody talked to my <laughs> yeah. friend the way that I talk to myself, mm. you know, and we do that, that self saboteur right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at that self-saboteur and be like, oh, okay. You're just trying to keep me alive. But that sales call is not a cyber saber tooth tiger. Like, right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like counseling myself, but I need to listen to myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we've got, we've got to do that. We got to take that, that, that five second breather. Uh, respond respond even to the that's right the volleys of flaming fireballs that are we've launched yeah. at ourselves um yeah excellent okay so you're on this dream highway you're overcoming you're fighting these obstacles um we we kind of you know we know the why behind it so man what do we 
what do we tell those um, or what would you tell those that are sort of they're on the sidelines, maybe like you, you're kind of in the game and mm. maybe somebody feels like they're on the sidelines and they're in, too intimidated to even get involved in the game or or get on the highway. You know, have you have you ever seen that where it's like you're trying to get on an on ramp and there's just so much traffic that people actually stop like, no, you can't stop. But they're stopped. And then it's like yeah. because they stopped, it's like now they have no momentum and now it's even more terrifying to get on, yeah. you know, on the highway. So what would you say to somebody who's in that predicament? Yeah. So, so the highway that you're seeing, the highway that you think you want to be on, is that true? Hmm. And if, and if that's not the highway, you know, is there a highway for you? Find the highway. First, hmm. you got to find the highway. <laughs> what, what interstate do you want to be on? Yeah. For me, my interstate, is getting to, to being the greatest host of all time. Okay. Okay, cool. Now I know what interstate I want to get on. All right, sweet. I'm going to put that in my GPS. Now Mm. my GPS is going to tell me things like Heather, if you want to be a host, host, host something, my friend, Yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah. Action, action, action. My friends solves everything. Mm. Let me repeat it. Action solves everything everything. So if you're not willing to take the actions, you will forever be on the sidelines. Mm, Yeah. And that's the the good and the bad of it. Yeah. Here's, here's the, here's the great thing. You you can do it. (laughs) That's it. You can do it. You can do it. That's the great thing. Right. And really, only you can do it. I was going to say, now here's the bad thing. Here's the downside. Not, not the downside, but here's the price of admission. You have to do it. You <laughs> have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else no is going to do it. No one else. Yeah. It took me a long time to figure that one out. Cause I was, you know, in my journey, I was like, oh, I'm going to put, I'm going to put somebody in shotgun. I'm going to have three rows deep. You're going to be in my min- minivan and y'all going to help me. Y'all going to yeah. help me. Turns out it's more of you're on a Vespa. <laughs> And like, you can tell people to come on your highway with you, but you it's, or a unicycle, even better. Yeah. It's you, you. And I think you have a song about this. You are the you, difference. You are the difference. Yes. Yes, I, I do. And you know, what's, what's so interesting. And I, with the lyric that I'm actually thinking of is from the song, the, you know, the dream highway song. And one of the lyrics says it's quite an adventure on the road. And it gets even better with some company. But here's mm. the thing. What I hear you saying is that it, it is fun to do a ride along, you know, for a little while. But mm-hmm. it's not if, if that's what you need to do to experience, you know, what is it like to be on the dream highway? That's fine. You yep. know, maybe you can take somebody along for a little bit to kind of show them it's not you don't take them along because you need them to be there, you know, Uh, of course we need support, but you know what I'm saying? It's not like we need their validation or, or that kind of a thing. But, um, but I, I really, really love this whole metaphor because, you know, when you, when you said that, uh, you know, this whole sideline thing, I'm thinking, you know, just think about a football game and I think, well, what if somebody's not a football player? You know, what if they see somebody play in football and they feel like they've got to be a football player too, because that's where the action is. That's where the mm. excitement is. And a specific way that that showed up for me today was, you know, obviously I play guitar um, and I was, I woke up with a, a, a hymn, actually like an old classic, you know, hymn from the 1800s going through my mind. And I was like, I just, I picked up my guitar and I started plucking out the melody and I was like, cool. da, 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 da. and then, and I was like, you know, I wonder, hmm, I wonder if maybe there's some sheet music online with this song, you know, like guitar tablature for this song. Let, let me look that up. And so I searched yeah. for it and I found this guy who has a YouTube channel and he's got like seven different albums that he's written and recorded uh, with all of these songs and he has wow. tablature for all of them. And my mind starts going crazy. Like I start comparing oh. my, what I'm doing to mm. what he's doing and thinking, 
you know, part of it is judgment. It's, it was like that a lobbing a, a ball of fire towards myself of like, well, you could, you could have done this by now. Mm. You know, you could, I mean, look at how many YouTube you know, viewers and subscribers he's got. You could totally have had that by now, mm. you know? And it, it is that like seeing what somebody else is doing, that's their highway, yep. you know, that might not yep. be. And so that was right. something that I had to like, okay. Listen, yeah. football may not be your game. Find your other game. Taj Mahal. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't my game. So I'm going to go find another game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, Find your game, find your game because yeah, 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 yeah. You can't be a quarterback. If you don't like football, how could you? Yeah. You simply can't. If you're more into curling, be the curler. Yeah. I love curling. (laughs) I I did too. I, I, about a year ago or a couple of years ago, I tried it for the first time. It's really amazing. Oh man. I want (laughs) to do it. Yeah. Um, and, or here's the other thing. If the game doesn't exist, create it, create the game, even create better, the game. create mm. your game. Yep. Mm. That's what, and in fact, literally that's what I'm doing. So if I yeah. want to host immediately, I started getting downloads, right? Downloads from spirit, God, yeah. whatever you believe yeah. in. Yeah. 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 doesn't matter. Mickey mouse. I don't care. <laughs> I started to get downloads and I came up with a couple different game ideas to try. Now here's the work. I got to try. Not only do I try, I got to stick with it for a certain amount of time to see if it's viable. And if it doesn't take another action, there you go. But action, action, my friends first figure out highway, then take action. (laughs) Yeah. And even if that highway is, well, I just got on this highway for a bit so I could get on this other highway. Yeah. There's always off ramps, always off ramps. You don't want to crash. Let us not crash. We can always get off the highway. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. (laughs) So many metaphors. I love it. This has been such a great conversation. I, I'm noticing the time. I'm like, man, every interview, I, I'm just like, and especially this one, I'm like, how does the time go by so fast? So let's let's do this. I, first of all, I appreciate so much, you know, just your time coming on and uh, us having this conversation has been so, it's been great for me. Uh, it's been, I'm assuming it looks like it's been great for you. Absolutely. Uh, I'm grateful I, for uh, it. Thank you. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a great benefit for our listeners. I'm thinking calling it uh create your own game mm, i like it yeah, i like yeah. it so you From do the greatest have a- host you haven't heard of yet <laughs> <laughs> there you go trying there it out go. just trying it out <laughs> yeah i love it i love it you do have uh, a, a free little gift i think for the for the audience tell us a little bit about that yeah, absolutely. So we're giving away a, a, a year's worth of content. So we created this, this content okay. calendar. Uh, so so uh, the best thing for you to do would be to send me a direct message on Facebook. So send me a direct message on Facebook. I have to be honest here, our funnel isn't completely set up. So in full transparency, kids, this is yeah. how business works. I, yeah. I don't want to you know walk away from this conversation without your listeners having an opportunity to get that content calendar. Yeah. So you know if you go to our Facebook page, mention that you heard that the, heard this episode and you want your free content calendar, and we will get that to you. But it has a year's worth of content, my friends. If oh. you you know have trouble doing that, we'll get you set up. Love it, love it. Well, thank you so much for that. And what we'll do is. Um, if, like I always say, people are usually, you know, driving or running or washing the dishes. I, I full disclosure here, I wash dishes with rubber gloves on uh, because I don't, you know, I got these fingernails oh, that smart. I need for, yes. yeah, for playing guitar. And man, if they're soaked in water for, yep. you know, as long as it takes for me to do dishes. Now, here's what I don't understand. What takes me an hour to do dishes, my wife can do in like 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah. how, do, how do you do that? So, yeah. Uh, that's why I usually ask her politely to do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing with content. We can do that super easy. It might take you forever, but we do it super easy. But yeah, so that content calendar is out there for you guys. Well, yep. that's so funny that you mentioned that because I'm like, why am I saying this? But the, <laughs> that, that's why, because yeah, yeah, great. Um, so for those people that are washing dishes with rubber gloves on, uh, <laughs> if you can remember the dreamhighway.com slash 79, the number 79, uh, just go there. I'll have all of the links for Heather's, uh, her free gifts, her websites, how to connect with her. All of that will be there and, uh, we'll get you guys connected. Uh, Heather, well, just once more, thank you so much for being on the, on the show today. 
uh, and sharing your uh, heart with us. I sincerely appreciate that. And we'll say so long for now. Thank you.